Do we put too much pressure on our politicians? Joining us to discuss all of this is psychologist Emma Kenny. Very warm welcome to our Manchester studio. Thank you for coming in this morning. Thank you for, did you walk in today? Oh, obviously. We're <laughs> hearing right. the commute is very, very, very quick. Committed. As you'll tell from her accent, she hadn't far to travel um, <laughs> there. But we, we look at this man, this very, very sorry situation. And as Isabel was alluding to, being in the public eye, facing the criticism and the social media barrage that these people do and their responsibilities as an elected member of parliament it's a lot yeah it's absolutely a lot because even if you think that you've got the steel and metal and resilience to manage it yeah. very often it's only in circumstances where these things impact you that you realize whether that's true or otherwise and it's really difficult when things are personal so when you're dealing with a professional issue and people are criticizing your practice that's challenging but when it's actually the spotlight is on who you are as a human being and how you've acted as a human being that can be catastrophically unmanageable for some people many people most people even. I do think it's changed the, the role of, of an MP with social media, with the Westminster cameras wanting sound bites, 24 hour rolling news. I mean, traditionally it was, it was quite a different role from what MPs face now. And I'm not in any way trying to excuse what no. he's been accused of in this particular instance. I mean, taking his clothes off or whatever else um, and, and, and taking drugs is not <laughs> the consequence of pressure. But there is certainly, as you described, a sort of unbearable pressure now, isn't there? Yeah, and I also think that if you think Think about drugs and we don't know whether he's taking drugs for example but dependency isn't something that people actively want to choose for example if somebody has an issue with drugs often it can be a disease so I think that you always have to have as you were saying a level of empathy and certainly when it comes down to the online world it is relentless it is powerfully upsetting mm -hmm. and also I think at times it means that you are guilty before you've even had a fair trial I do think MPs like anybody in the public eye they need to accept that there is a level of scrutiny and a level of attack that is going to be expected but like I said, I don't really think you understand how that feels until you are on the receiving end. I know people like yourselves, you're on the receiving end. It's not nice and it can yeah. be very difficult security-wise. Well, Emma, whether he's right or wrong or whatever sort of pressure he's under, the man's in a bad situation. Right. Yeah. Um, his, his wife, Harriet, has stood by him. It, that must be a very important factor when it comes to healing. I think that anybody who's reached the lowest of the low in their personal life situation when they're losing everything and people who love them can stand by them and say that I support you because I know you and I trust you even though you've erred and you failed in this respect that's powerful because you want to have foundations of support I often think that at a time where critically the world is rejecting and abandoning you mm -hmm. wow to have somebody stand by you and say you know I accept you as a whole, not just as a part. That's very helpful. Like I said, I think it's really difficult because what people have got to understand is people make mistakes, awful mistakes. They do things that they need to be called into question for. But these kind of things can mean that people take their own lives. Put it in context, a lot of people wouldn't survive this and we've seen in the past that people haven't survived it. And the question about MPs, look, I'm the first person anybody will know to call MPs into question, but we've had MPs murdered in recent years. Yes. They've lost their lives. Mm. This isn't something that somebody goes in thinking, well, actively, I want to represent my constituency and I. Oh. This happens. So we have to be very careful about the mental health. Is your betting because of the job that he does, whether he's right or wrong, I don't know the man, I don't mm -hmm. know what his personality's like or whatever, mm -hmm. is your betting that because he is a member of parliament, there would be less sympathy directed towards him. I think you him. expect people in public office to ho hold themselves to a higher standard, whether or not he's yes. fallen down or not. But I want to ask you, my husband often accuses me of using psychobabble. So I want to ask you as a psychologist, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here. Do you think the fact that people are, you know, instantly famous when they become an MP or certainly in the front benches in, in any form, that there's all this kind of publicity? That, that, what is it they say politicians? It's showbiz for ugly people, <laughs> politics. Do you think that the way the world focuses now on, on politicians and our elected officials that perhaps attracts a different sort of person, whereas it might perhaps used to be somebody who really believed in wanting to change the world, uh, to, you know, trying to do the right thing. Perhaps now there might be a few more narcissists. But there are certainly paradigms where power is concerned, and I would definitely think that you are probably going to cope better if you have a little bit of psychopathy and narcissism potentially in your personality, because it means that you think about yourself above everybody else, and you're not really concerned about consequences. I think the more affected would be people who are very human 
human, compassionate, they want to make a difference, and then they end up in a world where they can be corrupted to some degree, because yes. most human beings can be corrupted to some degree, and we forget that we are humans, we are not perfect, and most of mm -hmm. us make horrible errors of judgment at times. The problem is that, as you've said, the scrutiny of the public now is that every single thing that you tweet, everything that you say, every video that's taken of you, mm -hmm. even in circumstances like this, and I'm like you, I'm not forgiving the fact that this individual may have done something that was wrong and not fitting of the office, mm -hmm. but being set up, not being able to trust the world around you, full stop, well that's a message to every yeah. MP, yeah. and that is, you're not safe anywhere, so on a mental health level, how would it feel to walk around constantly thinking, nothing I do is safe now, wherever I go, whoever I talk to, this may be something that I'm fitted up for, ooh, that's hard, that's a paranoid experience, and I don't think mentally that's good for anybody. Yeah. Emma, that's you from the psychologist's point of view and uh, talking about that, and thank you very much indeed for that. Um, you're also, uh, you live within the Greater Manchester I do. area. And uh, we're here. Uh, we've seen the biggest uh, uptake in terms of our listenership, in terms of our viewership for GB News. What is it about this area, for people who don't know it, that is so important, that is the heart and soul of where we are? So I grew up in a working class environment, close community, and we're straight talkers and we like the truth. Mm -hmm. If you tell the truth and you allow people opinions and you don't make people feel patronized by being disallowed information because we're not clever enough to be able to ingest it, you will get a great loyalty because that's the reality about Mancunians. We're deeply loyal, but we're also very bright. Mm. So stick to that. And that's why you'll get a loyal following here. Well, thanks for summing that up so well, so powerfully, and hope to see you again before our week is over. Oh, yeah. pleasure. Take care. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed.